Beautiful. Bravo, bravo. You're a wonderful, wonderful musician and you had everybody listening with total focus and concentration. It's beautiful. And I'm sure some of them were saying, well, I wonder what he's going to say about that. You know, he won't have anything to say. And it's true. This is a, an artist. I mean, you were both artists and you've got a beautiful performance. And so what I, what I think is preventing it from being truly great is something very simple and very um, crucial. Mm -hmm. And you, do you know from memory what Brahms wrote, what the Italian marking is? At, the, at the beginning of the piece. You, you remember what you wrote without looking. Do you remember what you wrote? For the second movement? No, for this movement, yeah. Andante. Um, right, yeah. exactly. Un yeah, Ad Andante ma un poco adagio. <laughs> <laughs> Brahms lived in the world of ambiguity. He loved ambiguity. And in fact, he was, he was mesmerized by ambiguity. I don't know if you know about his life, and, but he had uh, very difficult things to deal with that we can talk about more in detail. But that ambiguity was crucial for him. And so it's neither an andante nor an adagio, and you know that. But one thing you've missed, I think, in order to make this, this strange title, Andante ma poco adagio, is, uh, ma quasi adagio, is that it's in two. It's not in four. And quite a lot of the time, it sounded like a real Andante in four. And I, the way you can always tell is what your toes are doing in your shoes. If your toes in your shoes are going like that, let me show you a passage. No, no, you play. Uh, play from there. What bar is that? I don't have my glasses. Let me just... Look. What? Eight. Bar eight. So play bar eight. And you notice what happens in your shoes. Right? <laughs> See how the you feel, you feel, right? What we're feeling is dum, bum, bim, bum, bar. So what I would like you to start thinking is two beats in a bar and actually only one impulse for two bars. Right. So just play your opening, play the opening phrase. Wait, wait, that's enough. What you've got is... Isn't that right? So what you are actually doing is one impulse which carries you for two bars. And because it's a very expressive gesture, you can actually be quite free with it. Just do it again and do it the way you feel. Yeah, and make the second bar absolutely the result of the first bar. Now wait, wait! Don't don't even do the do the second bar. So you are ta da di. Now leave out the next note and do ta da di. Yeah, but you notice your second bar is as strong as the first one. It's as you're saying ta da da. Say ta. As if the first bar, the second bar could not happen without the first. No new energy. Stop. And now the next one. Got it? 
Everybody got it? It's absolutely clear. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the little nodes are in order to reactivate the third bar. Yep. That's their job. So do it again. <laughs> Finish. <laughs> Now, nobody is in their toes is going chunk, chunk, nobody. It, they might be doing two beats. They're more likely to be doing one beat per bar. Now, that brings up a very interesting thing for you because, because let me explain to everybody here and to you both how I understand rubato. Rubato is to steal time. That's the word rubari means to steal, means you take time. And I don't know about you, but my experience is if something is stolen, you never get it back. Right? <laughs> when we were kids, we were exp we, people explained to us, rubato is they steal time and then you rush to give it back. Nonsense. You don't ever rush to give it back. You just say goodbye to it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason you give time is if something unusual happens in the music. If there's something which you're not expecting, a harmony or a dynamic or something in the music that is strange or unexpected, you pull the time like a piece of elastic to give that time. So now we're going to find out what you do because everything is unexpected. Play this first chord. Yeah. Yeah. See that you this we think is going to be A flat major and D D E and that's really strange, isn't it? So let's try once again from that and from the beginning and and that has to be the result of that. So your second bar has to be the result of the first. And you know when he writes poco forte, he means forte. Poco forte, but it's not piano. Poco, the word forte means forte, right? Three and yeah, but that has to be less than that, right? In order to make it feel the second bar has to be less than the first. You've got it beautifully now. Three. And you notice Brahms, that's great. Brahms is so clever. He, over those two bars, he has a slur over the whole thing, yeah. right? And he writes espressivo in case you want to be play it dolly. All right, do we say, we've got it. And nobody's feet, nobody, your toes weren't going like that, right? They went, and you can be as free, amazingly free. And I say that the more surprising the event, the more time it needs. Mm. That's not always true, but it's a good gu guideline. So if you, that note is very surprising, that's really surprising, right? Is it because, and then there's, so let, let's try that again. But it's definitely in two, on two and one, and two and three. Now, something happened to this gentleman, I don't know if you noticed it, but before he was playing on two buttocks, like this, and then suddenly he became a one buttock player, like that. <laughs> because, of course, he wanted to go over the bar line, like that. That's great. This is a one buttock player. That's great. Beautiful. Doesn't that feel different? Now that feels very different. And the little notes are just to launch the next phrase. Now do it without me shouting at you, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs>
So before you start, you have to think to yourself, if, if you can make a gesture with one hand that goes over two bars, then you've got the right feel and tempo. Oh, oh, sorry. That 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 E flat. That's a yeah. real surprise, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. So let's make it very special. Cool. And if you delay it slightly, then he'll know when to leave. To leave. But that was beautiful. Beginning was fantastic. <laughs> The third one is the biggest, right? Mm -hmm. So often things are built in threes. One, two, three. You need more time, right? right. And that's, or it can be I, U, we. One, two, and now chung together we go. But this is a one, two, three. And you, at the top, you can take more time. Okay. But that was beautiful. You got it. Your whole body got it. See, that was what I was talking about. To, 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 to you. Do you see how <laughs> his whole body is the music? It's not, it's not the clarinet. It's, it's, it's the, the, his entire body is saying, I'm, I'm in the music. And that's the next stage for you, for you all, actually. It's a huge thing. I mean, that's a fully formed musical animal. <laughs> 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 that's great. That's great. Beautiful. So when it comes the third time, and then I've got a trick for you. The first note of the phrase, when you get to this, lengthen this first one and then move. Okay. If you do them metronomic, you can't give the phrase over two. Otherwise, you're doing great. So should we do it? I wanted to hear once again. And I, what's going on in the piano is so interesting. Every one of these notes is unusual, unexpected. And notice how many times he writes a slur over two bars. That's the key, isn't it? Three, four, and... This is, that was great. Incidentally, could we have a little applause for that? When you, 
You're not going to do that again now, but when you do this one, don't rush these three. Da, ta, ta, yeah. You can take time on the whole thing, not just on the top mm. note, but on the whole thing. Now, you have a very interesting phrase, mm. which is over two bars yeah. and then a new one. And you're in two. You can take lots of time at the end of it. Should we try three and two? Uh, from there. Uh, yeah, at least that. You see, see. Dida. And then subito yeah. pianissimo. Just say, once again. Yes. And now we. There we go, we got it in two. Isn't that interesting? When it's in two, you have so much more freedom than you do when it's slow in four. I think that's what Brahms was trying to say when he wrote Andante un poco adagio. <laughs> Should we try from here? <laughs> Can I suggest a little thing? Yeah. Dolce, but full out so that the contrast with the pianissimo is more extreme. Sure. Should we try? <laughs> You're going, you're, you have to be equally in two like he was for you, with that freedom. But that was beautiful. Am I right? Yes, it was beautiful. So let, let's try it. Should we do from that? And it's interesting how much, the rubato is such a fascinating thing, because the rubato is just pulling like that, like elastic. But the moment you let it go, it goes back into the tempo. The tempo is always there. You never have to change it. Isn't that a fascinating thing? So it, all the, uh, you know, the uh, chelarandas and so on, you don't have to do anything. You just do with flexibility. Should we do from the, 41? yeah, where, where he comes with the theme. And one, two, and. Yeah, it's still in four because it's, let me show you how it goes. Do it again, I'll show you why it's in four. Play again and one, two, three, four, one, two, three. You see how you're stuck in four. Now we're going to do it in two. One, two, and yes. That's a surprise, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that a surprise? Yeah. So you need a little time. Right, yeah. good, 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 good. Do it once again. Do you get it? In other words, in, when it's in two, first of all, it's faster, which is why he wrote Andante, yeah. and it's freer, which is why he wrote Quasi Adagio. So let's just try right on the same place. Yeah, exactly. So one, two, and... And your job is make him feel to join that. You can help him. Three, four, one, two, 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 three, four, one,
Oh, good. That was great because you, you felt that was a special one. Was you took a little extra time. Mwah, love you. <laughs> love you. Love you. That's perfect. That's the way music works. It's the way you feel it responding to the harmony. Brahms gives you how to feel. Oh, right. Isn't that amazing? But that was beautiful. We've really got it. I'm so exciting. Could we just go? You still haven't quite got this idea of da da di da 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 di da, where the eighth notes go over the bar. You're still a little stuck da da di da. So again, think of the first one as a little bit long, and then move and and take that slur over two bars. And that's why he writes espressivo. <laughs> Uh, he gives you everything. Should, but you're doing fantastic. Should we try from here? Double bar. Gotcha. Yes, press you. Right. And dodgy. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's like, f like a butterfly taking off. Whoa, 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 whoa. One. But it doesn't do that in four. Butterflies don't go in four. They, they, <laughs> they, <laughs> we got a new animal into our world here. Three, four. Why do I say three, four? I'm talking about bars, you see, three, four, and one, two. It's in two. Yeah. Right. I'm thinking of four bar phrases. Three, try three, four, and two. Beautiful, bravo. time in the world as only Brahms does it right with the great do 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 from there da 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 di ba ba be ba 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 be I just wanted I wanted to give you more space <laughs> Brahms needs a lot of space he was 320 pounds you know at the end he was a big man <laughs> all right here we go da da di da di da Yeah, I loved it. I loved how you did that, both of you. Incredibly beautiful. From here, okay. pianissimo. From the first one he writes, there. pianissimo, leggero e dolce. Spaghetti bolognese, everything is in there. <laughs> yeah, there uh, the he, first one of the uh, groupings. Right, right. And look, at, look how the butterfly, he's fantastic. He's well, uh, Yeah, you come a little bit early with that one because it's so beautiful. Don't let any beauty pass you by. 
Uh, there's a beauty in the music. Don't, don't rush it over. One thing, one. Uh, now the first beat. Good. That was great. And imagine now it was the last time you were ever going to do it, and then you were going to die. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and this was the last time. And you, those last, da, ta ta chi, the most you can do. Okay. So that people are taken to a place they don't usually go. That's your job, is to take people on a journey in their life. And if you can take them to a place they never go, they'll be eternally grateful to you. Okay, and it was great, great playing. It's just that last one, the very last one. Everything in the rest of the piece is a result of that climax. Do you get that? Yeah. All the way to the end of the movement. All right, so we're going to do it one more time. And I t do more than you think I can bear okay. when you get to the top, right? Yeah. Ba -ba -bee, ba -ba -bee. Mm -hmm. I hope, I hope, I hope in my dreams that everybody in the room heard those two bars as one. I, it, it was so beautiful. It was just like that. That's the way music is supposed to be, like that. I hope you heard that. It's just so beautiful. Thank you for doing that, both of you. Incredible, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm sorry, it wasn't quite right. The first two bars and then use the 30 seconds to move to the next one. And join the two bars together. One, two. And she finish. Remember when I said that that climax takes you to the end of the bar, uh, to the end of the piece, right? Do you remember I said that climax has to be so big that it'll carry you all the way to the end? It did it just now. And what you do for people when you do that, for the listener, is you broaden their horizon of how life is lived. Because most people live their life one thing at a time. You know, six o'clock news, dinner, get children to bed, no, 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 no. And what Brahms teaches us is, no, life is a long arc of experience. And when you take us on a journey like that, you take the whole audience with you. And when they get to the end, they say, ah, I see. And they walk away a different person. It's such a beautiful thing that we can do with it, when we understand. But it has to be in two. You, you get that? Yeah. yeah. 
And it's so beautiful because you're at the stage now. That's what the artist diploma is about. You've reached the, the you're ready. You've got your business done. You know how to play the clarinet. You, you, you've got your business. And now you're going into the artistry of what makes a great artist. This woman here sitting here, they'll never forget. We did the mass in B minor and the final right at the end, the Agnus Day. She hadn't sung a note in the whole piece, a long hour and a half piece. And she came in a white dress and sang the Agnus Day with such depth and such simplicity and such beauty that people, people still talk about it. They still hear, that was a gift, Jane. That was a gift. But that's what we're looking for, always striving for something beyond what anybody can really hope for or imagine. And that's our role. We're explorers <coughs> like Shackleton. And we expect other people... We, we want around us people who are willing to make that journey with us, who are willing to see the difference between that da 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 ya da, which you did just now. Everybody says, thank you, thank you, thank you. You get it? Yes. Beautiful. Well, thank you for being here. This has been an amazing morning. Thank you. <laughs> <Beautiful>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 